in any so case. So what's up, Wooly? What's up Speak, this week? Speaking of nominations, what are we, what oh, are we yeah? doing here? What's going on? Oh, I fucking, we, we woke up and the baby came over and we all watched the goddamn Game Awards nominations. And this is following up last week, a couple days ago, the golden joystick shit. And boy, let me tell you, award season in video games has never been better. I hate it. It's never been better. I Did you watch? Everyone loves it. I hate it. I hate everything Did, about it. Wooly, you would have loved the fucking golden joysticks. You would have loved it. Train wreck is too kind. Uh did you watch um did you watch the set uh, the the konami press conference no. the famous one i i uh oh, oh like way back yeah yeah, yeah way yeah, back yeah, way yeah, back yeah, yeah 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 did you watch the sega anniversary screen it's stream that had that fucking weird buzzing noise going okay. on i remember i remember right up there okay right Legendary. up there dude See, it's just that, like, with game announcement shows and stuff, like, especially back then, there was always, yeah, those those were the, the, the industry memes that would define a generation. But you can remember how much I hated, like, like, like top 10 lists and shit like that. Oh, yeah, you hated that shit. And so, like, the Game Awards is just the ultimate. It's the ultimate oh, it in sure is. fucking trash. And it's like, okay, so... I'll, I'll we'll catch the wind of like whether Sifu is a fighting game, I suppose, or not. But dude, what I've caught Liza wind of P is up for RPG of the year. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what I've caught wind of, I guess, is um, uh, Baldur's Sweep, uh, Hi Hi-Fi Sweep, and Fuck Starfield. Okay, so um, do you want to talk about the the Game Awards nominations, or do you want to talk about the Golden Joysticks first? Because those are two wildly different topics. Okay, so I I know next to nothing about the golden joysticks. All right, let's start there. Scratch let's that. Start there. I know nothing. Okay, so Troy Baker comes out. The golden joysticks is uh, supposed to be like the Golden Globes because all the devs are in attendance and it's a smaller scale show, but it's still fan voted. So okay. I don't actually see the the actual difference between the two. Uh, and it took place in the UK. So step one. Step one, Troy Baker up on the stage, big glass of wine in his hand, telling us, reading off the prompter, I'm not going to try and win you over with comedy and dad jokes. This is, I'm, I'm, we're going to have a classy show. He then proceeds to read maybe the shittiest batch of jokes I've ever heard at an award show. And he knows it because... He starts to go like like a third of the way through where he's a little more buzzed. He starts to say, I did not write these jokes out loud with his <laughs> mouth. Like the phrase, I did not write uh, these jokes. The classic and then late he night gets, talk show he, host. He gets to the two thirds part in which he's so mad that he is looking at the producer who wrote the jokes, who is off camera and saying, Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> I didn't write these jokes. So Jordan that, wrote these jokes. That now that is a late night bit that works when you read it and and the the late night host is as shocked as the audience is and goes wow and tosses the card or whatever. Here's the part. That's here's a classic bit. Here's here's the part where you know it's real. Paige picked up on this when we we're watching it. He would do it and then he would read the announcement and then he was so pissed off that he was like pushing off the podium as he walked off like Jeez. like he he was he was seething okay so on top of that his microphone wasn't on when he got up on stage so he, they had a microphone attached to a podium then they then they turned the microphone up but then realized that there was no actual um, mic for any of the direct feed. So when they would play like Japanese developers accepting an award from abroad, um, what they would do is you would just hear the stage noise through the podium microphone as people were watching. But then they figured out how to cut to the direct feed and the direct feed for every single video would loop after 10 seconds and restart. So all the Japanese awards, like everyone who won the award in Japan, you didn't know what they said because their video was just looping with no translation. Oh no. Um, 
the microphones started to feed back into each other at, oh, uh, yeah. at the, yeah, the 60% yeah, yeah. mark. Okay. Okay. Um, the, mm -hmm. the cameraman kept cutting to like the podium while it was empty and then cutting to like the stage area when there was no one there. Um, um, Troy came out and started to talk about how millennials don't know what magazines are because I guess he's too old to understand that millennials had magazines. Like the the picture um, I'm getting is is of Troy with like wino tongue, like like with, um, with like purple not, I, lips, know, like <laughs> not quite, but uh, not quite. Wow. Uh, okay. My personal right. favorite is they had like one indie dev that wanted their their trailer to be shown, and uh, when they went to cut to it, Troy walked off. And instead of cutting to the direct feed or even the wide shot, they cut into a close-up at an angle of the podium. So all you could see was like the bottom left one third of the trailer for the whole trailer. Oh. Like you couldn't even see the name of the game at the end of it. <laughs> okay, so um, Podium Chan getting a lot of push. But here's, here's what here. So this was all incredible. This was all amazing, right? What really, really kicked it up to the next level was the crowd of developers talking over other developers' acceptance oh, speeches. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's so rude. Damn. So like, so, like, Troy has to come out at some point and actively shush oh, the crowd. No. And at one point even points to a table and goes hey what table are you guys nine nine Gr you guys are clapping having a great time good for you guys good noise all the rest of you bad noise oh boy. bad noise and it and it hit it hit the fucking climax as Neil Newbon, the guy who plays Astari in, in Baldur's Gate 3, the guy who, uh, he runs a, a performance capture company, he also played some characters in Detroit. He comes up and, he and he's giving his speech where he's talking about how Astarian is a survivor of abuse and so is he and that's why the character means so much to him. And as he is saying these words, the crowd is so loud, just <laughs> and drunk that you can't hear him. Oh, and then you hear man. someone closer to the microphone go, shh, shh, shh. Oh. And Where's Chris Judge when you need him? <laughs> it dude oh fuck so uh page uh and dad asana have have teamed up and they have a super cut that page is going to be checking out on her stream uh in the near future of the troy baker moments okay of of crowd work um uh, oh yeah oh yeah somebody points out you you also got a really fun thing where at about the 60 70 percent mark they would cut to the crowd and you could see people getting up from their tables and getting ready to leave okay mm -hmm. and and walking out how long was the show uh, the show was 90 minutes fuck <laughs> okay oh yeah so troy troy at one point came up and his bow tie was almost all the way off his fucking mm -hmm. lapel and it was like that for like four trips up to the podium. And then he was like, so how long has this bow tie been off? And people in the crowd were like, uh, like a half hour. And he's like, great, thanks guys, thanks. And takes a sip of his wine. What do you and mean I can't take off my sweater? Again, I'm later. hot. <laughs> um, Damn. Train wreck, Tr disaster. Damn. Like, oh my God, like right up there, right up there. With with the Konami show of yore and that so Sega, it's been a couple thing. of years since it's been like just even on a, on a technical level an absolute fucking clusterfuck. That's uh yeah, it's been a while since we've had one of those. Okay, and um, and uh, Baldur's Gate three won every single award that it was up for at that event, which. So uh, good for them. They deserve it. But maybe this is my own head cannon, but I feel like you could feel like annoyance because mm -hmm. there are a bunch of teams there that had like a lot of people there that didn't I, win nothing because I Baldur's Gate 3 won everything. Well, I imagine it's like the Golden Globes or so where like the big thing that's the favorite. No, it's fan, it's fan voted. So it, Just... I thought it was going to be developer voted. It wasn't. It was fan voted. Mm-hmm. 
Um, oh, I didn't even get to the categories. So they started off being like, hey guys, some games aren't eligible for some categories because they came out too recently, right? Like, that makes sense. People didn't get to them, right? So for best narrative, we got, what, Alan Wake and Spider-Man 2 up. But then when you get to the PlayStation game, Spider-Man 2 is disqualified because it's too new. Wait, what? <laughs> you see, this is that this is the shit that I just I hate. Like what are those what are these arbitrary metrics? Uh Man. no one could figure out. Something that came Play out two seconds ago, now valid, no longer valid. Yeah. No, it was, Sick. but it wasn't. No, awesome. Don't worry about it. So uh yeah, no, I uh it's incredible. Uh, also, yes, yeah, streamer's choice, but every single person. Hey, I want to know. We, we got a live audience right now, and well, you're here. I would like to know if this is petty and shitty of me, and I'm an asshole, or if this is like a legitimate confusion. Because this is two times in my life that I found this out. They go to the streamer's choice awards for the biggest streamers of this year, and I look at them and I go, I don't know who these people are. And that's fine. You don't know a lot of people in, in, in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. But then you start Googling a couple of them, and you're like, I have more people in my fucking show right now than some of these folks do ever. So what what the fuck what the fuck metric is this? Like like let's take Vinny, for example. Vinny's huge. Vinny's incredible. Vinny Vine Sauce, one of the best streamers ever been ever, right? I've never seen anybody on any of these awards that is better or more popular than Vinny ever. Well, except for Iron Man, she got she got uh, 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 nominated for the TGAs, but like I dude, I don't, I don't get it. Is I don't. I have no idea how it works. I've stopped trying to understand. I know that like the last time I tried to was when there was the fucking um, uh, uh, Quebec streamer bus stop oh ads. Which I'm, were so that's the first time that, that happened. That's and, yeah, and that and the la and the last time I tried to understand where because I remember you mm -hmm. and me standing at a bus stop looking at a guy who has like six thousand subs on YouTube in two thousand and fifteen or sixteen or whatever yeah. it was, and just going, "Where's my bus stop ad, Quebec?" Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, and I think I, I, again, I still don't, I don't understand, you know, maybe you just gotta know the right person or whatever the, whatever the, whatever the, the favorites cases and such. But no, there are, there are absolutely giant people. Yeah, Maximilian's out there with like a humongous following. Um, it's, it's weird. I don't know. On all I can really tell is that like from, I guess like in some cases talking and meeting with some, uh, uh, uh of the folks, there's a, um, there's a weird thing where the people that watch our stuff have an insanely high like retention rate compared to other Everyone groups. listening to this podcast is better than people who listen to other podcasts. <laughs> so, like um it's weird because like yeah, despite the fact that my fucking like sub numbers were like capped out practically <laughs> um on on YouTube with with everything the algorithm's doing, it also has a overall larger percentage of people checking out things and sticking around on a yeah. regular basis than others with larger tops do which is i don't understand how and why that works but um i mean i think it's just holdover right ultimately yeah. but yeah it, it's 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 unclear it's unclear i know that like channels that are um massive and like dedicated towards one subject matter or one game or one thing will often have like a uh pretty inflated initial appearance and then like mm -hmm. when there's not a lot to talk about with the one given subject things kind of drop off in a way yeah um and then there's other th times where it's like people are there for the subject as opposed to the personality so i don't know i don't know but <sighs> the, but 100 percent consistency on like the it's, most of the names that get dropped i don't recognize certainly. it blows me away so now we can move mm -hmm. on to the game awards and the game awards now we can just get mad at categories like we do every year because they're the worst they're the fucking worst um hey man it, it, it well this has been a really great game year right this has been like astonishing right yeah so would you say that in the entirety of the game awards you should see maybe more than like 12 games that would be a good <laughs> idea for the. It room. is. It is like, dude. Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate three are like up for eight awards each, 
and and like it's just it's the same games in every single category <laughs> it's um so the ongoing game category I, I don't know if that was there when that was invented it, or... it has yeah it's been there okay that feels like a good way to just be like, here's all the thing, the games that never yeah. stop, and 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 put them also, over here on on the side. But maybe maybe I'm out of touch with the esports. But the best esports category this year is the same games that it was in last year, and I think the last year before that. And it's like esports seems like a really stagnant category if it's the same ones over and over and over um is there a sort of like do you have to apply and then go through a series of qualifiers to be even considered is it one of those things where like you might end Nobody up on knows. this list if you just filled out the forms <laughs> you Nobody know like knows. okay um i will say that um this they're like I think uh, Chris Wolfhard on Twitter really nailed it, which is like they feel bad for Microsoft because it would be nice. So Starfield isn't up for Game of the Year, mm -hmm. and that means that Microsoft has not had a Game of the Year nominee at the Game Awards ever. Like, ever. Oh, ever? Like, not once. Not <laughs> and it's like, oh, bummer. I guess, but like, what what would it be then, you know? Well, <laughs> Halo, Gears of War, Gears of War, or Halo on those years back in the day, they they could have fucking back in the day swept it. Hmm. I guess the question is what came out at the time, right? Is this a raging bull situation? You know. Also, um, maybe maybe I'm out of it. I'm playing Super Mario Wonder. I think you've played Super Mario yeah. Wonder also. Yeah. It's up for like five categories, and I'm like, I... it's it's an awesome Mario game. It's very yeah. good. It's very good. It's like, it, yeah, it's, I don't know, man. I don't know. Award, video game awards have never been worse, uh, and I'm here for it. Wooly and I are having the same, are op having opposite reactions to the same thing. Well, I, which I, is, I, I think it's the same reaction actually. <laughs> but do you? I think it's the same reaction in opposite ways. All, all okay, those. yeah, it's the same reaction, but the emotional <laughs> content of that reaction is in opposition. Sometimes I don't feel like smelling the dumpster fire. Sometimes oh, give me the that. whiff give me that is trash. Sometimes mm. the whiff is too strong. <laughs> uh, so we talked about it back in January, or maybe it was February. I'm not sure when you got to it. Um, Hi-Fi Rush is absolutely being snubbed because it came out in january and it's not it doesn't didn't cost a shit zillion dollars like hi-fi rush should absolutely be in the game of the year contention it is it is still like oh my god it's so incredible so it, it got... didn't even win best audio at the golden joysticks because ff16 won it because of fan voting you know for as much as I think the game critics in their ivory tower are a bunch of out of touch freaks, I think that's still a better solution than pure fan voting. Um, so I'm looking here. A uh, uh, Hi-Fi got what? It got art direction. It got score and music and audio design. Yeah, which it, it uh, this is at uh, Game Awards at Gold yeah. Joysticks. It lost audio, which was only one category to sixteen okay and accessibility uh mm -hmm. yeah fair okay the only person who should do the top 10 is me also you have good taste too also. <laughs> but, I feel, but, I, but i feel like every year the vgas is really it is the same 10 games just over and over again like it oh does, yeah it it's... feels like that constantly like i don't get it like game maybe i'm crazy i don't know but you shouldn't or like like the only thing that you have control with if, you, if you're going to fan vote it or critical vote it. So the only thing the organizer has control with is what is essentially the seating, the nominations, right? Go, okay, well, I want, I, we can nominate this, we can nominate that. And they have to be reasonable, right? But you shouldn't stack up the way the nominations work in a way that one thing can win like five categories in a row for what is essentially the same award. 
Yeah. It, it's, like, I know that there's, like, plausible deniability if it's, like, well, Hi-Fi Rush is a great game, and it does have sound as its main thing, so that's going to be, a, it's going to come back in that category, and if there's, if there's a game that is firing on all cylinders and is, is exceptional in, in multiple different ways, you can, you mm -hmm. can understand that, but, like, when it looks, when you just scroll down the list and it ultimately feels like you have picked your 10, and this is the only things we're going to really call out. And there might be like one or two little occasional exceptions showing up here and there. It doesn't really feel like much of a choice, you know? Also, yeah. there's a there's there's recency bias, which I think everybody of understands. Course, but if course. you don't, recency bias is the thing that's closer to the time you make the decision is more forefront in your mind. But like, I feel like this year, more than any other year ever, like budget bias is is like out of control quadruple like, a stuff only. like stuff like hi-fi rush dr like dredge dredge is incredible mm -hmm. dredge should be up mm -hmm. for a bunch of awards it's amazing mm -hmm. but it's you know it's not you know the most big budget triple a action game that everybody played um it got it's in for debut indie and hi-fi rush is up for debut indie no uh dredge and I, think uh, I remember it. one of the one of the games on that list is not the debut indie for that studio. <laughs> it's just extra funny. I think it's Cocoon. Okay. They've released games before. Yeah. Um... You know what? I'm gonna have my own game of the year awards, and Pizza... the only person who's gonna vote for them is me. Pizza Tower is also debut indie. Yeah. Um. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, I just, I like, rather than try to sift into the waters no. and, and see if you can understand what you're looking at here, I just, I'm just like, I, all of this, <sighs> all of this shit, just, it just yeah. bugs me. <laughs> you know? Anyway. Um, so when's the actual show then? Uh, December 7th. Oh, that's coming up pretty soon. Okay. Oh, I was just informed. Two of the debut indie nominations have, were also nominated for Best Indie, which means one of them will automatically win Debut Indie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, scrolling. Yeah, I, I don't know. And then, and then I feel like there's always, like, I remember how, like, things would get with Oscars back in the day, how it was like, if, if this gets picked over here, then is this second one over here going to actually be, like, a... a um, consolation prize slash, you know, we're not going to give you all the things. We'll let you get two or three tops and then make sure others... It, it's... Anyway, whatever. It's it's a fucking mess. Um, sure. I, I suppose tuning into the actual award show is is necessary. Well, and, if you if you watch you the know. actual award show, you might get to see the Schick Razor Hydrobot. Oh, fuck. Or Bloodborne. Oh, shit. Uh, what about Silk Song? what are the odds of that Paige said that to me this morning and i was like shut up, Just shut up. Uh, i can't you know it's unbelievable that silk song was in that that highlight reel of like games that will all come out one year from now and then team cherry had to come out on twitter and be like by the way it's not going to come out one year after that that sizzle reel very sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like holy shit is that game even real? I uh, it's 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 a team that works like too hard for their own good, and like this is I guess just what happens when you when you bet it's been done for years, done according to like sane metrics or yeah it's sane cherry metrics, metrics. <laughs> because you know it was again it was also going to be free DLC like it it the whole thing is nuts. Um, yeah, I, and and you know, there's there's certainly a, a probably a story to be told about the work ethic there and the way they view content creation and the way they view, um, you know, the finish line. But um, I, I doubt it's a matter of bug cleanup. I I, I suspect it, it's probably just like things like feature creep and just wanting that polish to be. No, you don't. A across, maybe they're being attacked by locusts and snakes at all <laughs> times, and that's why developer. Because they are from Australia. Mm -hmm. Or rather, they are in Australia. 
you know, who knows? A giant spider has destroyed the hard drive with the latest build on it. You know, this is a bit of an aside. I think, so video game genres are awful. We can all agree that they're awful. They don't make any sense. They're contradictory. No one can agree on them, right? Action adventure game. Yeah, action, ex terrible, right? But I think we can all agree that the RPG genre for award purposes is the worst genre description of all time. Like, like you know how Sifu was rated as a fighting game and yeah. how that was ridiculous? Yeah. Every single year for every batch of awards, the RPG category includes games that are very obviously not RPGs to like anyone with a brain. Yeah, so like I feel like the category should just be renamed best game with level up numbers. It's <laughs> like like it's so can we ridiculous. Just, is it just, is it anything beyond the concept of this game has level up numbers in it? Like that, wait, that Lies seems of to P be it. Is an RPG? Does that mean Armored Core is an RPG? Or else, like it's ridiculous. It's silly. Um, when you hit things in Battle Fantasia, damage numbers pop off. That's an RPG. That means Battle Fantasia is an RPG. 